Hello, day four in Chicago. Um, we've we just got to our well. We've been in one night in our main accommodation while we're here. We're here for five days, um, and it's really rad. We're in a um, uh, renovated 1920s castle, which has like been split up into all these different apartments, and it's pretty big. It's bigger than I thought it would be. Um, and so far in Chicago, we've been pretty chill. We've had a few. Uh, we've run into a few issues um, based off my crappy selection of accommodation, um, which I thought was in one spot, ends up being in another spot. So I thought it was in like a good spot in Chicago, ended up being in the wrong side of town. And we drove through this pretty interesting neighborhood and we're too scared to get out of the car, which might be uh, because we were only two days in, exhausted, anxious, and um, stressed. And so that combined with the environment that we drove into, uh, probably contributed to our inability to actually get out of the car and get into our accommodation. So we just left and booked a hotel elsewhere. Um, for good reason, we later found out when we talked to some people in the hotel and we also looked up the suburb profile that we were in and it ended up being like the sixth like most violent suburb in Chicago or something. So we just like, we're really happy that we changed our minds. And um, no hard feelings, it's totally my fault. And probably, and probably if we had managed to stay there, we probably would have like been able to figure out the suburb and figure out the people and figure out how to actually settle in. But um, we're only there for one night anyway, so it's not worth it. Um, and the amount of stress we were under, it's better just to find somewhere comfortable. Um, yeah, so update. Been training, we found this really cool gym uh, which is actually a chain of gyms and the fella there gave us um, like a, a seven day pass which is perfect for here and Miami and he gave it to us for like 15 bucks so good um, we went to Whole Foods which was really awesome um, I wish we had Whole Foods in Australia it's so good um, we just did like a huge shop came home and food prepped and just felt so good about that which is really lame but um, you know that's what we like to do. And um, we also went to Walmart, and that is an experience that should be on like TripAdvisor or something, is to go to Walmart and just see it and like, you know, preferably in like a lower socioeconomic area. <laughs> Cause it's all, it was fun. It was really good. It was good fun. Um, and yeah, so we're in this castle, it's really cool. Um, surgery's coming up pretty soon. We have to fill out some forms for the place we're staying while we're at, while we're like getting ready for surgery, pre-op surgery and then post-op. So we're staying at New Beginnings, which I think a lot of people know about. Um, we heard about it through a friend who was there. And so they basically take really good care of you and house you while you're recovering from chest surgery and um, they sort of drive you to your appointments. If you ask them, you can hire their car. They have dogs, pet therapy, so excited to see animals. And we've been obsessed. Um, every dog on the street, Hillary has to stop and say hi. And we just noticed there's cats in the courtyard. So really busting to get down there and see them. <laughs> so ridiculous. Um, we went to Lake Michigan yesterday too. It was like a dog beach, it was really good. But anyway, so um, yeah, we had to fill out forms for the new beginnings and I just had to confirm some of the dates with um, Dr. Garamani's office because I think I put them in my diary wrong, but it missed like one day. So I think my pre-op is on the 9th and my surgery is on the 10th and my post-op's on the 17th, pretty sure. And we fly out on the 18th, so it's nice and close. Um, uh, look, I've been having a really good time. We've been doing a lot of stuff, just driving from one accommodation to another and driving here is pretty freaking crazy. Um, not just because you're driving on the wrong side of the road, but also like, you know, there's not, there's not as many like strict road rules here. It's a little bit looser. You kind of go when you want and you go this way and that way as you please, unless there's a sign that says you can't. So nowhere near as bad as China, but um, enough to get yeah, your heart rate up. So we've been doing heaps of stuff. Um, but there's, I guess there's been an undercurrent of stress around the anticipation of surgery coming up and like what that's doing. So I'm doing, obviously doing heaps of processing and, um, 
and what it's doing is highlighting a lot of the body dysphoria so I'm really in tune with my system anyway but I am in tune with my system generally with big black spots over certain areas but what I've noticed is that those dark spots are not there and so this for dysphoria that I have around those areas um, is really highlighted and you know dysphoria for me gives me a deep sense of discomfort um, you know for people who haven't experienced dysphoria uh, it's kind of the discomfort that is associated with the big separation between what you are in your head and your mind and the gender that you experience upstairs or in your body and um, the distortion that it has with that your actual physical body so when I'm um, when I you know I'm uh, you know, and I can say this like I'm totally on the other side of the spectrum, physiologically, mentally a man, but my physical body has female attributes and like strong female attributes. Like I'm not talking like, oh, I've got curvy hips or anything like that. Like I have boobs and I'm just not meant to have boobs. And then last couple of weeks, uh, probably more so in the last few days, I've just been like, why the hell are they there? It just doesn't make sense. They don't match me. There's nothing right about it. Um, you know, it's causing this deep sense of discomfort and that's what dysphoria is and that's been highlighted over the last few days um, as surgery sort of starts coming to and uh, it's cool, like I can process it, it's just really affecting my stress levels so um, I'm finding like I get, when I get really stressed or anxious I'm paralysed so I can't do anything and if I can't do anything then I get irritated and uh, so if I can't find something in our luggage I'm like, oh where is it? And, I'm just really lucky that I have such a nurturing and amazing fiance. Have you still got your shirt on, Hills? What? Have you still got your fiance shirt on? No. Ah, that's all right. Next time. Yeah, so uh, that's been highlighted. And like I said, I've got a really amazing, understanding, nurturing fiance who's been helping me through a lot of that. And I usually find it just comes, at, comes on at night when I'm not distracted. Uh, when I'm trying to settle down and relax and um, yeah we've just sort of been I think it'll go and go for a few more days and then I think it'll settle down again and it's clearly another step in the process um, of getting myself mentally and emotionally prepared for surgery and not just the actual surgery like what comes after that which is having a chest that suits me as well so you've got to sort of get through the darkness to see the light so I'm really cool with the process it's difficult I'm cool with it it's difficult looking forward to the results uh, and so before I go just in case the fam is watching this I'm gonna take you for uh, a guide around the house so this is the uh, living room and it's really cool because he doesn't have a TV which we're kind of really into and um, I don't know if you can see down there into the courtyard. There's a really beautiful courtyard and there's the turrets and stuff of the castle. Ah, it's really cute. Let me see the turrets over here. Yeah, there's a turret. Can you see the turret? There it is. <laughs> anyway. Bathroom. Bedroom. Hi. Hi. Other bedroom, pretty red kitchen. Anyway, that's the update. Update again in a couple of days. Bye.